Now, in this work session, I have something very, very <laughs> special for me to do. I'm going to try to fix the last of the flaws in those that side panel and maybe even get it up into yellow today. And I've been ultra, ultra fussy about that exact panel because that's the panel that the part of it that's going to have the FCR decal on it. And I wanted to really not compromise it in any way. And as I look at the two evil twins, I just think, oh boy, the twins. And pretty soon I hope we're going to have other twins or triplets or quadruplets. Evil twins. This is what's always a good way to start any session. Any day. Feed the fish, feed the birds, have some coffee and get to work. Now the reason I've been so fussy is because I want those FCR decals to let really lay down perfectly. Now, what this has given us an opportunity for, and because we still don't have the heat off in the house, all of the clear has dried up an extra day, and that's way that's big to my advantage, because sanding this out, you know, a few hours after you paint it, yes, and I've heard you can do that if you live in California or Florida, but here in these damp, cool shop conditions, I always like to let it sit an extra day. And the whole point is when I get this decal on, I want that side, I want them to match, I want them to be perfect, and I'm willing to pay the price. So the price is kind of simple. I've painted this several times and reprimed it, and I really just don't want to compromise until I have this exactly flat and this area back here exactly flat. And I'm really taking my time with it. I just hope the final result shows it. What I've been doing is I've just been going back over and over this part as many times as necessary. Now, the, the whole key thing to getting this part exactly right, when you have this much repair work, it's almost impossible to do this. That's why I say this is... This is one of those things, I don't know that there's that many people that, that would even want to do this, or they could do it, but I wanted to share how I've done it. And actually, I've had some luck. Sometimes I don't have all the luck in the world, but I do all the feeling by hand. Now, this is the part that's critical. Uh, if the decal is not laying flat here, it's going to be a mess. It's not going to look the way I want it. And I'm dry sanding this. I don't want to wet sand it because I don't want to take off all the paint. I'm going to put one more coat of white on this. Hopefully it'll be better. Each coat of white is making it better and better, of course. What's happening is I'm burying the repair work in here. And it's just, this is just one of the things that, I, I don't know, a better word than mystery meat. Sometimes you do this kind of work and what happens is, it's just perfect. The next time you do it, there's a bubble or something, something that makes you crazy. Now, what I've had luck doing in the past when I really have things that won't go away like this, if this doesn't go away in the next time or two, I put a layer of CA on top of it. I don't want to really do that because it's still nice and smooth. It's just that there's little spots on here that I know could be better. What typically happens when you dry sand, you get, because this paint really isn't cured for a day or so, you get where you have to do this action. Now, what I, I just want to show this. My fingers are out on the edge of the sandpaper, and I'm dusting it. I'm not pressing down. Then I'll move my fingers back, do a little more dusting. You can see the paint dusting off. Then I'll turn it over and start the same thing up at the other end. And go in a different direction, go in a different direction. Of course, the ultimate goal here is that this part is flat. And we're going to find out pretty soon. As soon as I tack rag this down, I'm ready to go see if it's my lucky day. Is it my lucky day? Have I had my lucky cup of coffee this morning? Now, it's the thing I've always liked about paint. There's a lot of things in life that are just a little bit different than paint. Paint has one characteristic. If you don't like it, you can sand it off and start all over again or use paint remover or whatever. You never, I always say, you're never married to a coat of paint. There's some things you are married to. 
when you take a two-stroke engine and cut the exhaust ports, you're married to it. You can't put that material back. But in my case, if this whole part, if I dump the bike again, now I have a quarter touch-up pain. But anyway, I didn't buy it for that reason, but it, I do sleep better at night knowing that touch-up pain is in my house, and I don't wind up going to Gavin's and, and Dennis got fired or something, or whatever. Who knows? Anyway, we're all tack ragged down. I'm ready to see if it's, again, if it's my lucky, lucky, lucky day. Now, as I'm out here and I see clouds are already rolling in, unlike yesterday, which was a beautiful paint day, today is a very marginal paint day. So I'm not going to waste any time. In Karen's garden, it, stuff is already coming up. We already have flowers. Spring is in the air. Okay, it looks like we got good enough coverage on that. I'm not unhappy with that at all. Just going to let that sit. Give that a half hour or so, and before, hopefully before the rain comes, well, you never know. Every day is an adventure. Now that's the first coat, and that's a, what some people might call a thick coat. Now this color yellow, I've noticed, if you give it extra coats, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. It's a very translucent color, why we have to paint it over white. Almost like a candy apple, but it really, it really pops in the sun. Now what I want to do, because it sure looks like it's going to rain any minute now, and Karen's got some honeydew stuff for me to do, so I'm going to put this in the garage and let it dry. Here's what she wants me to do, is dig out all this grass here so she can plant some flowers. Well, I can do that while, pretty much while this is drying. And if it rains, it's going to be inside in the garage anyway. Now, of course, I love my pond and my backyard, and Karen and I really do enjoy the upcoming season. You can see here, probably the last time it won't be all green. Here's a couple more plants that are just coming up automatically. And this time of year... There's always something to do. And it really is beautifully relaxing out here in the evening. Once these pots all get full of flowers and the trees get green, and the fish are, fish are already hungry. They like me to eat any time of day. Now my goal today was pretty simple, was to get that in yellow without a flaw, or as flawless as I could make it. Well, and get the color match right. You really can't do a color match until you put the clear on it, but now I have enough paint that even if I've got to do repairs or touch-ups, I don't see any part on that that's not going to be fine. And once we pull all the back mask in and shoot the clear, well, of course, I've got to put the decal on, the FCR decal, but here's the, the, the good thing is no matter what, we have all the paint we need to do anything, now, even a paint another bike. Now, my goal was in buying that paint yesterday, here's what I thought was important. That this color... When Dennis mixed it, he mixed it from a part, well, it's the seat, from the, the cafe seat. He matched it. Now what I wanted to do is when I do this bike and make an evil twin out of it, keep that word evil twin, I want to make a cafe racer with a GS1100 gas tank, and I hope somebody can find me one on eBay for under $100. I'm, I'm going to hold my breath too. And then I probably will be making a custom seat 
Turbo Steve volunteered to make the seat, but you know what? I'm sitting here and I don't have the seat yet. So Turbo Steve, uh, go buy some foam. Anyway, that's going to be our project for next year. But here's what we want to do this summer. We want to wear tires out. I have three more tires to change. And every year, I don't, I don't even keep track of the miles. I keep track of how many tires I've worn out. And that seems to be a more important thing. But that, our riding season was delayed a couple of weeks because of this unfortunate little tip over. It's totally my mistake. But just coming out to the garage, checking out all the bikes, knowing that maybe a week or two from now, the, the latest, this should be back. But right now, the honeydew list goes on. I got to go dig dirt. Making a garden isn't easy work. It's bitching. So that was my first honeydew of the year. And thank you to my evil twin who looks just like me. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure his age, but he looks a little, a little beyond his prime. Now back to the real work of the day. We need to get a second coat on this. And I don't want to hedge or fudge or try to take some kind of shortcut. Because that color, Yama Yellow, that color is one of the outstanding features of the bike that I am in love with. I love it on the RD. Of course, it's a similar to the Yamaha racing bikes of old, pays a little homage to them. The real homage it pays to is my honey do list though. I'm shot. I'm shot. I'm not the man I used to be and I wasn't that good before. I want to get the paint on this before the rain comes. So the way this day played out, we actually did beat the rain to, it isn't raining yet, I shouldn't say that. It could downpour any minute. And this is all I'm going to get done in this session, but I'm glad because what I wanted to have happen was, because there's so much paint, this Yama Yellow takes so much paint, it's like candy apple. I wanted it to dry overnight. I want to come back and pick this up in the morning, do the decals, if it's and if it's raining, I have things to do too. We'll try buffing out some of those parts that have clear on them. Well, we've been working late every day lately. Gardening, summer stuff, watching a baby, Little League. Oh man, did that dry up nice. And it is, I can tell, I've been doing this a long enough time to know that is going to be a flawless part when I'm done. And that is quite an accomplishment. Anytime you think it's easy, Anytime you think it's easy to take a bike like this and put 800 hours into it and, and then go slide along on your ass, it's not that much fun. It's overrated. And it has really been an adventure. This whole project, as I look back at this whole project, including this repair, this has been quite, this is almost as big a project as, as the Evil Twins or this green bike. Boy, what an adventure this was. Someday I'm going to tell the whole, the whole adventure on video. But anyway, Karen's got supper cooking. We're going to pick this up tomorrow morning when we're fresh. I look at this part right now. Wow. Wow. And I'm candling it and I don't see any mistakes. I don't see anything. It's almost, it's almost as good as a new bike. Yeah, that's not really true. Anyway, any more than I'm better than an 18 year old. Anyway, it's been a long day. I'm done. Now, this is pretty funny and you can't make this up. This is the kind of stuff you can't make up. They were worried about rain yesterday all day. Well, I finished painting the FCR side piece yellow. Got the final color on. Put it in the garage. Shut the door. Went into the house. 
got ready to have supper and I heard <laughs> and it rained so much over the night and last night the pond is full so as I'm feeding the fish this morning that's, look at the pond it's full right to the top holy mackerel holy mackerel but that's good sequencing and in the course of restoring the FZR, we've had some good sequencing. And we've had a couple of bad sequencings too, but yesterday was a good one. And today, I'm really looking forward to maybe it'll stop raining. I don't know how it can keep raining. This The pond is full almost. Holy crow. Well, today I'm excited to have my coffee and get down there, do some work on the FZR and get this bike back to where I can ride it. And that's what I always like about my life, is trying to make every day different than the day before. And yesterday was a good one. And yes, this was a very lucky day to get this done yesterday, because today I can get the decals on that part. And even if we can't spray to clear, if it stays raining all day, well, now this part has sat under a heating vent for two days. I can do some wet sanding on that. Or I can wet sand and buff out the mirrors. Or I can just sit here and dream about the day that this bike is all back in one piece. And the last good news today, I got my package. It's always out there early in the morning. I, thank you, whoever delivers this. I got a whole box. This, you can't even pick this up. It's so heavy. Oh, more new bolts to add to my collection of new hardware. So when I once thought the project table would be empty for the whole summer... I was wrong. We still haven't caught up on this stuff. But there's always one way to get the day started on the right foot. Extra, extra strong coffee. Looks like we got the lone eagle out there this morning. All the seeds are wet. <laughs> wonder what the birds do. Do they have umbrellas or something? Poor bird. Everything's wet this morning. See, this is what I do. I feed these birds, and they poop on my car. So the first thing I have to do today is get the back masking off of this carefully. So far, we've been very good. So far. Next step is just use, using any kind of a credit card. Just card the edges off. Get any little roughness we have off. And not much on this. There's not much paint buildup, but even this will help. 45 degree angle. You don't want to go 90 and you don't want to go this way. Just 45 this way, 45 that way. And anywhere you can get off some edge, just less work to bury it and clear. Then the last thing is I want to wipe this with a very clean brand new paper towel. I see I got a couple little touch-up spots that I can make better. And once I do that, we'll be ready to put the decal on. Now at this point, no matter how careful I am, there's always some little spot I want to touch up. I got my little artist brushes. Thank you, Karen. And maybe nobody would ever see these little spots, but, but I will. Now what I always do is I carefully go and look at it, go have a cup of coffee, let it dry, come back and look at it again because I'll always find little spots. And it's this thing of touching up any little scratches, any little imperfections because it's all going to get buried and clear. Once it gets buried and clear, it almost totally disappears. Even I can't find a touch up sometimes. Now once that's totally dry, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to cut out the FCR decals because we're pretty much ready to put decals on. Now considering what this panel was about a week ago, wow, it's a miracle. Now when John laid these decals out, John Pothier, he left a little microscopic line that I use for cutting. 
and it's a very very delicate thing to get it to cut brand new blade I might use two or three blades just to cut this out to get it cut and I have to go around the whole letter of course this this will <laughs> will definitely take a, a few minutes that's for sure but we want to get the whole thing I want to get this whole thing cut out in one one section just takes time there's no there's just no easy way to do this now luckily we have four of these in case we screw up there's no telling if we're going to screw up or not <laughs> that's for sure now since they're on white the white paper this is going to leave a, a white border around the lines and I don't but I don't want to see that that little tiny line a computer generated line so once I get these cut out we'll be good to go okay now just in case of course we have spares and the, the lesson to learn from all decaling when you print these up always print spares okay because I have the the opposite panel I was able to get the positioning very quickly I laid out some eighth inch tape just to make sure I'm going to be within bounds and the, the trick is now and I will get rid of the R for right now is to get this in perfect position then put the R in because it'll be easier to move the R around if it's a little bit out than it will be to move the bigger decal now as soon as that decal starts to get ready to move I want to get lined up in that corner I don't want to have to maneuver it around more than I have to right about there I'm light on the edge I want to slide this out as conveniently as possible now of course we have the babysitting part of this now this is why I spent all the time that I spent to level this off because right now if we had a big bubble or something in there it would be a problem now it seemed just roughly seems to me the white paper which this is the inkjet white seems to be a little bit thicker or it just seems to lay down a little bit better I don't know why no idea John probably knows and this is going to be and I'm not going to let the camera run but for 10 or 15 minutes I'm just going to sit here and do this and from the middle out try to get it to lay as flat as possible and just like paint sometimes the decals cooperate and sometimes sometimes they turn into uh, road warriors or whatever this one looks like it went down pretty good now now the next step will be once I'm going to give this 10 15 minutes just let it cool let it dry and then to get the R position right in position and that'll be the next step to get it lined up okay I'm waiting to see if this is going to slide here we go and of course the advantage that we're trying to take advantage of water slide decals not the stickers the big vinyl stickers which stick up and the problem is then you got to bury them in clear you need a gallon of clear the the water slide decal bury in clear very very quickly uh, let's hope this goes in the way we want I'm trying not to touch the part that touches the yellow kind of lay it out all right it has to go up there just a little bit down a little bit Now this really has to dry about a half an hour I'm guessing a half an hour maybe 45 minutes and then I want to if it isn't raining and it's, looks like it's going to stop 
I want to shoot some clear on it. Get two nice wet coats of clear and then put that aside to dry. And that'll probably be the end of the day. But the next time I get to work on this, we have parts. These have been drying. This is going to be three days. So that clear for sure is ready to sand. And of course, this, this guy is ready to put back on a bike. But once I get the clear on that, and if it doesn't, if the weather doesn't play out today, I'll just wait because I want a good day to put the clear on. And this is the five star clear we've been using. Now, I, I don't have a real answer to this question, but Dave Midgley asked me if all the four to one hardeners work in urethane. And I don't know. I know Bob Brookins will know, among other people. But for right now, I'm just guessing for my purposes. If you use 5172 and 5186, I haven't had anybody tell me they couldn't get a nice, a nice that paint to lay out the way they wanted it to. So, uh, and again, we're talking about 100 bucks a gallon. That's some good paint. And this thing, I've, I've really put this up by the heating vent, thinking the warmer it is, always remember, the warmer it is, the quicker this paint hardens up. In my cold, damp garage, it takes uh, a lot longer than if we were in a warm weather climate, you could put it out in your backyard. But I'd never want to put it out where anything black is in the direct sun. What happens, as an example, and I've done this before, I've painted black mirrors, put them out in a bright sun when it's 90 degrees, and the paint bubbles up. It, it just, because these become little, little heat sinks. Now those decals went by just about as uneventful as I've ever laid out a set of decals. And again, I don't know if that white paper is uh, superior, better, thicker, thinner. It just seems like it goes on pretty good. You know, I always say that it's important to have good sequencing and important to have good luck. It looks like today we have a little bit of each. The sun is out. It was raining all morning. The sun is out. Oh my God, it looks like we're in in painting heaven here but I'm not gonna waste one minute I want to get out there and get the clear on two wet coats maybe 20 minutes half hour apart that would be the uh, the plan anyway we'll find out because sometimes the plans change that's for sure The first coat went on pretty well. Assuming that no squirrels land on it or, or whatever, I'm going to stay right out here. <laughs> Babysit this. I call it babysitting. I got so much invested in this repair, you can't imagine. You can't imagine how happy I am that because when I got to ride this bike with the uh, the new paintwork on it, the new restoration, I was really happy. And I'm going to be happy again. Decal laid down perfectly. Thank you, John Poth here. Now, while I'm out here babysitting, Karen runs out and says, you've got an hour, it's going to rain again. She just checked the weather, and as she checks it, big clouds are coming in. Oh, man. I do want to get the two coats on today. I really do. But I'm sitting out here babysitting. I don't want any birds pooping on this or anything. Got a lot of time tied up in this part. And looking at my uh, my lovely work of last night. Oy.
can't make this up as I'm out here babysitting. See this little bug? The bug flew right in. Oh my god, I'm telling you. How can you make another touch up? Ugh, I don't believe it. At least get them over to black anyway. <laughs> oh my god, a bug. Yep, we'll touch that up in the final product. Before we put the final clear on, that'll be touched up. That's why I'm so careful about babysitting because there's birds and trees here and I really have had a gust of wind could come along where I don't mind sacrificing a half hour hanging out out here. Actually, it's pretty nice. It doesn't look like the, it's going to rain, but that changed yesterday in Ari. Now what I try to do, and this is an important concept when you have decaling and tape lines, I try to put extra, every time I do a pass I try to get a little extra on the decals, and wherever there's a tape line just to build up extra thickness there so I can get those lines nice and flat. And where our little friend landed here, I'm going to have to sand that almost down. I know there's clear underneath him, so as soon as I see him disappear, well, we... There's always a little sand through somewhere that I have to touch up. The touch-ups are ongoing right up, even after you ride the bike, there's always a stone chip or something. But we try to make it as good as we can every step of the way. And that's that's proven to be a, uh, you know, a, allowed me to have some pretty nice motorcycles without spending a ton of money. And the basic idea here is to get enough clear on everything, ultimately that we can just blend these paint lines in Blend the decals in so you rub your hand over it, you don't feel a single thing. So as I look over this project, I just think it's, it's on track. A week from now, we're going to be riding a bike. But the thing is now not to rush it. I like to do the old school thing, let every coat dry, sand it all out. And when it comes to the final buffing, the buffing is a piece of cake. Then. If you try buffing it out and skipping steps and... And we lucked out. Good sequencing. We've, we've, we've been lucky and we've had good sequencing both that have allowed this repair to go a lot quicker than I thought it would. So I hope you enjoyed the video and wear your Mexican hat when you do gardening work. <laughs>